There's nothing better than bringing my people's joy. Our joy is bold, vivacious, and contagious. Joy gives life flavor with the ultimate blend of rhythm and vibes. When joy takes flight, it can't be contained. It is robust. More than a smile or a laugh, it's an infectious experience. Here's to all the creators that inspire us with their creativity and passion. Keep filling the world with joy. My joy, celebrated by Frito-Lay. We've got a good one this weekend. Live from Las Vegas, Leon Edwards and Kobe Covington. Have you made your bet slip yet? We've partnered with DraftKings for the fight. Right now, new customers can take advantage of an amazing offer. All new customers that bet $5 will instantly get $150 in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings app now, and don't forget to use promo code SMOKE. That's right. New customers bet $5 on any wager and instantly get $150 in bonus bets. Stay in on the action and use your $150 in bonus bets on DraftKings Same Game Parlays. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code SMOKE and bet just $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Welcome back. All the smoke. Las Vegas run. Jack, has been a great day. We get to finish off with... A GOAT champion episode. This is a GOAT champion episode. I'm saying in, in just a short time, the accolades. I mean, uh, only six years in the game, but two-time MVP, two-time champ, two-time defensive player of the year, hmm. NCAA champ. Hmm. I mean, hmm. women basketball, I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than the woman sitting next to us. I'm trying to tell you, and I'm trying to tell you. You already told me. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Asia Wilson. Thank welcome, you. welcome, Round welcome. Of applause, man. Yeah, long got overdue. Got the champ in the building, man. We've been, we've, been, we, we, we've been trying to lock in with you for a minute. We got your teammate, Kelsey Plum, who was a- She's so dope. A huge <laughs> advocate for you during this. Fucking love she her, was, she was, yeah. she was on your, she was ready to fight some motherfuckers for you. So <laughs> yeah, Kelsey, she dope. She was down. Um, your motivation once said that you, you imagine young black girls watching you play. Uh, what type of person do you hope to be and, and, and how do you hope to motivate this next generation that watches you coming behind you? Yeah, well, first off, thank you so much for having me. I'm yes. excited that we finally got a chance yes, to be here. To lock yeah. in. Uh, but no, when, it, when I come to thinking about where do I want my legacy to be, it has to be, okay, yeah, she was good at putting that basketball in the hoop, but she was an even better person. Mm. Like I want to be able to plant those seeds for the next generation mm -hmm. to be that that tangible role model, I always like to say that, because a, a lot of us have role models. A lot of us have people that we're like, oh my God, yes, love their game, love who they are. But it's very rare that we can come in contact with them. Right. And I want to be sure that I'm in those spaces. Touchable. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I'm in those rooms for them to be like, oh no, I want to be Asia Wilson, but I want to be better than her. I want to be in those, sitting at those tables that we don't really get invited to. Right. I, and that's what I love. And that's what I really kind of mold my game of just saying, okay, it might be one of those games where I'm exhausted, but it's this young young black girl that's out there that Watching wants me. to see me, yes. wants to be out there, and I got to yes. show up for her. So, I yeah, just being there. Quick question. It's not even on the list, but where did the shorts tuck in come come from? <laughs> Where'd that come in? Because you got the short tuck in. I'm just like, yeah, oh. Yeah, okay. I, I feel like I'm Nike's worst nightmare because I'm always tearing up their uniforms. Uh, but no, I wanted to tuck my shorts because I hated shorts touching my knees. I felt like uh, I couldn't run pain. in it. I couldn't do it. Uh -huh. So I just always tuck it. And uh, at this point, people sometimes think it's a play call I do it so much. I think uh -huh. it's just like a an antic that I just uh -huh. do. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what it is. And it's kind of cute, you know? Definitely. <laughs> so I'm glad you said that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because yeah. okay, I, yeah. I, I thought that was the reason for doing. Oh yes, yeah. I mean we gotta, we gotta be, be careful now. these days yeah. insinuating anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. you said it. You're goddamn yeah, right. Yeah. You're goddamn right. Yeah. <laughs> Listening to you speak, following you, you're a very humble person. But right now, I want you to kind of talk your shit. Do you uh -oh. feel like there's anyone in this game that's on your level right now? Because I personally, I mean, there may be a few people close, but I feel like you're kind of in a class of your own right now. And sometimes you have to break your arm and pat yourself on the back. It ain't this and nobody else. It's just, Facts. you know what I'm saying? You put the work in. Mm -hmm. Facts. Um, This year, 100%. Yeah. I felt like right. I was yeah. I was in a groove that mm. was like untouchable. Uh, it was something that I've never, like, I was so glad I was finally in it because I was like, waiting on my moment, you know? Like, you just wait on that feel, like, nah, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I had that, like, her moment, like, nah, mm -hmm. this is me, this is what yeah. I'm here to do, and no one can stop me. Um, and it's just so funny because I had that great year, and then at the end, it's like that one fourth place MVP vote. And I know I keep bringing it up, but that one vote was the vote that I'm like, oh, bet, I still have more to give. Like, right. I can still come back and play this game that I love and just tear this league really up. Really dominate. Yeah, because it's like, 
like the minute I felt like, okay, yeah, I'm in a safe space. It's good. We playing. We winning. I'm feeling like I'm good. And it was like, boom, fourth place. And I was like, oh, it's mm. people out here that think I ain't good. <laughs> right. So then it's like gave me that chip on my shoulder now. And I think that's the exciting part. But yeah, I do kind of feel like I'm on a it. level. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I got a chance to play you with Steph. It. Yeah, play against Steph Curry, but play with him. And he, in our game, is is a selfless superstar with no ego. A lot of people say you're a similar for your sport, a superstar, no ego. It's all about the team. It's all about winning. Where does that come from? Ooh, um, my parents. My parents are kind of one of those. They're those two people that are like, you know, we, everybody eats. It's not good. It, I mean, the top gets lonely because you're up there pretty much by yourself, but you can always bring up others with you. And I think that's kind of how they are. And I knew when we were coming here, when they drafted me in Vegas, I was like, it's going to take a lot of sacrifice. Um, it's going to take a lot of adversity. But where do we want to go? What's the culture we want to build here? And that was just coming with the sacrifice and putting everybody in front of me in that a, a, case where all right everybody eats and that's when I feel the most joy like it's cool when you get a couple well, like an MVP it's cool but when you get them rings and it's like no nah, we all did this mm -hmm. I feel like that's the real big moment where I'm like nah we we really good at this <laughs> yeah. best memories of the 2023 championship Y'all have a little of my uh, two, 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 uh, 07 Warriors team and y'all. Y'all yeah, get turned cracking. up. Y'all was cracking. Drinking, cigars. Who partied the hardest? May have been some other shit we didn't know about, but we went to. Like, Man. I'm taking bets. Yeah. I know who partied the hardest. Uh, who you think partied the hardest? Kelsey. Uh. <laughs> you and Kelsey. <laughs> you and Kelsey. Like, y'all the only ones day. up there with bottles. Dang. <laughs> you and yeah. I feel like this championship, we equally were totally yeah, like yeah. we was like, nah, that. this the one we gotta let it right. loose. Yeah. And I felt like we yeah, last year was kinda we was I was I was on the slippery slope <laughs> last, last year. But this year everybody was toe up. Like everybody. But I would say the highlight of this year. Ooh. I just would have to be like, it was game, it was after game three. And we just lost to New York. And we were like, man, like Chelsea's going down. We getting a call. Kia might not play. Yeah, that's crazy. So it's like, what the fuck? Can I cuss on here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Like, it was like, what the fuck? And we were just all in our, we were all in this like hospitality suite. And we were just like playing board games. We were just looking around like, how the hell we about to do this shit? Mm -hmm. And I think that was just a great memory for us because we could have, like threw Folded. in the towel in. Yeah, like yeah. we could have said, you know what? Every reason to, to Yeah, go in the like it was like, man, we just came up here just to be up here to see the lights. Like we we just need to go ahead and pack it up. But I felt like we got in so tight then mm -hmm. that I was like from that moment, I was like, nah, we're not, we leaving here with something. Like Denzel said, we leaving here with something. Like <laughs> right. we not, we not gonna just come up here empty handed. Right. And I think that was my favorite moment was just kicking it with my teammates in a space where you would think that we would crumble, but we really came together the most. Stronger. Yeah. And those are the moments too. Obviously you got a lot of basketball heavy, but those are the moments when you're done. It's not so much the games, right. it's those moments that yes. you remember. We talk most. about like the bus rides, the flights, yeah. <laughs> gathering after a tough loss or kicking it after a great win. Like mm -hmm. those are the moments that sit back in your mind like, that's what I miss. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Uh, the wonderful, she's a good friend of ours, um, Candace Parker was on your team, but she got hurt. Yeah. And, um, but it says a lot about her, the player she is and everything she, she accomplished. She was your biggest cheerleader. 100%. Can, 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 we, can, we talk, can you talk about the impact she made yes. without being on the court to your team? Yes. I mean, when you're talking about a GOAT, Candace is my GOAT and forever be it. Mm. And it was just truly amazing to be her teammate. And I didn't even want a fangirl because I'm like, all right, you my teammate. Yeah. Now. We in the locker room together. <laughs> like, we're good. But it was just like 13-year-old Asia, like, what? Yeah. Like, you were my screensaver. I had, like, I went yeah. to Tennessee to see your jersey retirement. Like, and now – you're feeding me information. Like now you're telling me how I could continue to grow this game. And it's funny because when she all started figuring it out, I texted her, I was like, you know, we could take this league over, right? And she was like, all right, let's see. So it's just really cool. Like, and just to have her constantly there in our ear, always talking, the way she sees the game is incredible. Like I'm like, Candace, no wonder you're the GOAT because what did like that didn't even make sense like <laughs> but like just having her constantly in the timeout so she really was talking to me in new york a lot like me individually was moments where i'm like nah this is real like it was like really that sisterhood and every single day she was there and i and i we really appreciate her for doing that that's dope real quick what you wearing i ain't seen them you know Nike them is cold you gotta you know, win championships to get them low key you know it's a little pink and green action them for my hard yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pink and green, aka. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. 
Um, well, speaking of shoes, you should. This is one of the dumbest questions when people talk about it. There's no way you shouldn't have a signature shoe. Uh, even the Kang himself <laughs> said that you should have a signature shoe and it's, and yeah. it's on the way. Yeah. How do you feel about that? And is it on the way? It looked like she got it on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it, I feel like just in my spirit, I feel like there's something in the works. We're going to manifest it. We're going to manifest yes. that and put it in the earth. Uh, but obviously, I would love a shoe. I would love to Nobody have Nobody deserves people. more in the WNBA than you. I, and I appreciate that. But, you know, work's never done. Yeah. We got to continue to grow, continue Politics. to do, Yeah, shatter through this glass ceiling. Uh, but I'm never going to let up. Uh, never going to always have an opportunity to get better. But, yeah, hopefully one day uh, I could be wearing my own shoe. And it's the next coming. person could be wearing them. And the next one. And we can yep. grow my from there. My daughter's playing basketball. She'll definitely going to have yeah. them on. But can boys wear them? Of course. Okay. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be on. a shoe for everybody. There you go. That's like, that's, like, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Two questions. Um, what is it like having Braun uh, speak about you so highly, and do you have a relationship with him? Yeah, yeah. Braun's my dog. Uh, obviously, we don't talk every single day. We're not besties, right. but like yeah. realistically, like that's my dog, and uh, I always appreciate him because if anyone has a voice in this world right now, he does. It's LeBron James. Right. Okay. And when you're talking about being in those rooms and being in those spaces, the number one person is probably LeBron that can be in those spaces. Mm -hmm. So we always joke that you know we get hit with a lot of stuff on Twitter, a lot of trolls, a lot of that. But it's pretty cool to say like when I go click on your bio, and you're like, oh, King James fan. I'm like. How are you bashing me when the guy that you idolize yeah. is like really cool with me? One of your biggest fans. Yeah, so it's kind of like that mutual attention. respect that's just like, ah, nah, like I appreciate you for doing that. And yeah. it's he doesn't have to, uh, but he does. And so it, it's always all, all love when it comes that way. And that's it's one thing exciting. I love about him. Game yeah. recognized you know I mean? game. Yeah, he just, yeah he just, for sure. He's super <laughs> a lot of love. Dog. Yeah. Yeah, no, I went to the game last night and I, I, I was texting these dudes. I was like, LeBron is such a showman because like yeah. w whether he has a ball in his hands or during free throws, he's over there talking to the crowd, riling them up. And I'm like, this shit is dope. Bro. Like, I just love what he brings to it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, born and raised in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Family is very important to you, specifically yeah. your late grandmother. Speak to her importance and how important family is to you and your upbringing. Yeah, I'm a family girl through and through, hence why I really couldn't leave South Carolina for college. Um, because they are just my stepping stone. They're my foundation and everything. And my grandmother was someone that helped me build my confidence. And she was able to pull Asia away from the uniform. And I think that's the mm. beautiful thing about it. She allowed me to be Asia, not Asia Wilson. Mm. And it gave me that healthy balance of growing up in a crazy world and just being myself. So I love them. They're, they're my heart, my spine, my rib, all in between. Mm -hmm. yeah. So your pops entered college the same year the first black student athlete enrolled in South Carolina. Uh, what types of stories uh, does he tell you about his college experience? Ooh, hmm. Insane stories that I, it's kind of hard for me to wrap my head around, but also being in South Carolina, I'm like, you I get it, get it yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. they, of course, they're not going to let you do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but just the different stories of just how he had to continue to break barriers just to be able to play the game that he loves. But I also enjoy the fact that he can now watch the seeds that he planted flourish mm. through me. Right. And I always joke, I'm like, and everybody has a statue. It's kind of like, they either did or they knocking on the door. Not why they living. Right. And so for me to have a statue now and my parents go by there, I mean, every single day, they're like, oh, my God. My baby yeah, girl. it's like, this is her. Like, wow. Uh, it's pretty cool to see that, like, yes, yeah. he went through all those things. And, yes, it was hard. He probably segregated his high school, I feel like. But it's like now you get to see your daughter. Reap the benefits. Mm -hmm. Do that. Mm -hmm. And right, that right there just kind of seals my deal. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you do a lot of work in the social justice space. Uh, what type of impact are you hoping to make? Man, change doesn't happen overnight. Uh, but at the end of the day, just making everyone, just being respectful for all. I feel like that's the biggest thing is just being respectful and kind to one another and understanding that we're not here on this earth for long, but we can make a difference no matter who we are, uh, no matter greats like you guys or me still in it. Anyone can make a difference, and that's kind of what I continue to want to push forward. And any young black, brown, white, doesn't even matter, like, Everyone has a chance to be able to be great in what they do and to help another person. So I just try to sprinkle that on everything. That's right. <laughs> uh, don't be a homer on this one. Give me a real ass answer. All right, come on. Better Hoop State, North Carolina? South Carolina. Or South Carolina. Ah. Duh. Jermaine O'Neal say the same thing. You thought I was about to say. But is North it real Carolina? though? It is real. Okay, I'm just asking. Don't do that. I mean, asking. North Carolina may have the numbers. Okay, cool. I'm just asking. But when we're thinking about like real basketball, Prospects. come on now. Yeah, South got Cat it. Got it. Is that where Ticket was at before he went to yep. Chicago? Him and Jail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See. 
<laughs> Your biggest basketball influence growing up, whether it be male or female? Ooh, biggest basketball influence. Mm. See, I really didn't like basketball growing up. Really? I didn't like to sweat. What? I hate, were and like I still a, hate Were you sweat. like a girly girl? What? Am I? Yes. I, yes, yes, yes. You still, because she still has yes. still play basketball. I can tell. <laughs> I hated basketball with a passion, like everything with it. I hated the color of the basketball. I hated everything. <laughs> I was like, this sport is disgusting. But I love the guys that played it. You know, like I was just like, oh, wait, they're kind of cute. But playing it, absolutely not. But <laughs> my father obviously played it, and he was like, you better do something. Like, I didn't, he was kind of like, I didn't birth you for you, just sit here. So <laughs> I was like, all right, let me try it. Um, so after when I started getting involved, I love, I was a huge Blake Griffin fan. I loved, I just don't know what it was. Yeah, just, Lob I was City. a big we, Blake yeah. Griffin fan. I guess the fancy part of it. Uh, obviously, Kobe, <laughs> LeBron, like mm -hmm. all of them. Uh, and then I met Don Staley. And uh, obviously, won't. Candace was my growing up and Lisa Leslie, even though I didn't get a chance to see Lisa play. Uh, but then I met Don. And she influenced my whole career. And it was like on something that I was like, no, this woman has really changed my life. And that right there was all the inspiration, all the influence I need to be me. Dope. And yeah, she killed it. That's what's up. <laughs> Dawn is the GOAT. Yeah. She yeah. is the GOAT. <laughs> was there ever a doubt in your mind that you were you were not going to South Carolina? Mm, yes, yes. What other school were you thinking about pulling up to? I really wanted to go to the University of Chapel Hill. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. How are you going to answer because that? Because the Didn't boys were cute. Uh, oh, okay, I, okay. I, I, yeah. It wasn't even for the hoop game. It <laughs> wasn't even because of the hoop. It was okay. for the guys. All right, my bad, my bad. Uh, hello. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, y'all thought I was talking about basketball? Yeah. Absolutely not. Right. What? Yeah, I was about to sign that dotted line on my official visit because I was like, oh, yeah. They I here. see me here. What? That light so who skin was, on my skin not, was like, not to Dude. say that that's who you was crushing on, but who was what, 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 what kind of team was there at that time? I have no idea. Okay. So you just. But I just knew when I got to that campus. It was popping. That's all I it's saw. Going. And I was like, yeah, this me. I'm this right up my alley. <laughs> but, yeah, that was the yeah. only time. But I remember when I had to call my coaches, call the coaches to say I wasn't coming. My mom was like, well, if you don't want to go to South Carolina, you're going to have to call Dawn Staley, a black woman, mm. yourself, and tell her that you're not wanting to be coached by her. Mm. And I was mm -hmm. like, whoa, when you put it like that, this basketball thing might be something good. So, yeah, yeah South Carolina was my strong second, and I'm so glad that I chose it. <laughs> Best choice. That's yeah. You were the number one recruit in the nation. Don Staley moved you to the bench after she your did. first game. You was pissed off? Or did you deserve it? I deserved it. She I knew what she was doing, too. Yeah, I stunk it up my first time. Like, my first collegiate game, it was so bad. Like, it was horrific. So I was like, okay, maybe the bench is for me. Uh, let me try this. Give it a try. And then, yeah, the, the, rest, the, the rest is history at that you, point. Do, do you think that she sent you to the bench to wake you up mentally? Um, she really didn't start getting to me mentally until, like, sophomore, junior year. Okay. She started playing All mental right. games. All but, right. like, I think – she knew like that was just going to be the best fit for me. Like right I needed time to see that see the game. Like I couldn't just throw my she couldn't throw me out there because yeah. game was too quick. It would have killed your strong. confidence probably. Yeah, I yeah. would have never probably been the same player if she would have just let me be out there. Yeah. So yeah, I think she just kind of pulled me because she was like, Nah, you just need to see it and then you can kill him. So look at your yeah. ass now. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So look at you, you now. <laughs> what was it like when you first met her? Ooh, it was just like. Coach Staley keeps it, keeps it real. So it was just like honesty and like she just really felt, she felt like my second mother then and now she still feels like my second mom yeah. now. So yeah. like she was in gyms when I wouldn't even play because I was terrible at basketball, but she was there. Like the loyalty she showed, I was like, nah, like I gotta, you got something else. Like She's I wanna, I wanna grow. Yeah. yeah, I need mm -hmm. to grow and that, that, you're the best. That's dope. Yeah. But so, basketball, we know she's a big part of, of your career and your success, but what does she teach you about life? Be a pro and be disciplined in everything that you do. Like, don't take anything lightly. Don't take anything off. Like, always be a pro uh, the way you carry yourself because you never know who's looking, but just being in spaces that you feel safe, but never lose yourself. I think that was the biggest thing with her. She let me be me. Like, it'll be days where I would come into her office crying because my boyfriend didn't take me back, and she's like, Girl, sit down. <laughs> like, take it off. Like, it's a lot. Yeah. So she just allowed me to be human. And I think you see that also in her when she's in the community, when she's talking and she's tweeting with fans. Like, you never lose sight of just getting into the celebrity vibe, but always staying humble and staying within yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. Something she always words. taught us. Mm -hmm. We spoke about it a little bit, but let's touch on it and on its own. How many people 27, get this? 27 years old. How many people get this? 
and you have your own statue. That, go, just take us through that day. You go by and clean it off ever? Yeah. <laughs> Put some armor sure on, no on it. You got, some, you got some dust on my motherfucking forehead. <laughs> it was uh, in a crazy experience because they told me at graduation. But I thought it was a joke. Like, I was on my phone during graduation. All these cameras pulled up, and I was like, what they got going on? And so that's when the president of the school was like, yeah, we want to give Asia a statue. So I thought it was a joke. I'm starting to laugh. Like, whatever. Like, y'all not. Because people always say, oh, they need a statue. So I'm chilling, and then that's when it really hit me. The the lady that sculpt, sculpted me, uh, she did Michael Jordan's as well. Mm. And so I had to go to Chicago. For the United Center? Yeah. All right, all right. Now. Got yeah. It. And so they came it's and they measured, name like, e right, it's right. A hell of a name drop. When she, she name dropped, when she came to my face and, like, not my face, she came to Chicago, and she literally scaled my whole face, like, my teeth. my Like, I had, like, all these things around my face. She was like, yeah, I had to do this for MJ. And I was like... Hmm? Girl, you can't just say that like right. <laughs> it's nothing. Nah, nah, she letting you know something. <laughs> right, like, nah, you're in good hands. And then yeah. I went and I saw it. I was like, oh my God, my legs are nice. Like, I like this. This is cute. Um, so yeah, then finally, I watch a lot of scary movies. So I was like, I hope nobody trying to take me out when I'm up here trying to say my speech. I got nervous there. But no, when I saw it, uh, it was truly amazing. And like, you know, like you said, like, I, I, I'm young. And to have something like that, to be immortalized, is crazy. Salute. <laughs> Salute. Number one pick in 2018 for the Aces uh, came out the pot frying 20 and eight. Uh, do you even have a welcome to the NBA moment? W. I mean, excuse mm. me, WNBA moment. Hmm. Because you came out the pot. Um. Frying. <laughs> I did. Uh, I, went, I, did. I, I did. I did. I did. I did. I was not gonna lie. Of, yeah. I yeah. Kind of did. Um, I would have to say my rookie year, I think, was Maya Moore's last year. And it was like Maya, Rebecca Brunson, Sylvia Fowles, Lindsay oh, Bailey, Simone damn. Augustus. So it was like, what? Like, it felt like yeah. I was playing against the Monstars. Like, no matter what. I mean, I was good, boy. <laughs> I was coming off. I don't know what I had the night before. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling good about myself. Boy, Rebecca Brunson got this rebound over me. And I was like, girl, you got it. You <laughs> don't have to worry about me at all. <laughs> I don't even think she saw me down there. Um, so yeah, that was my moment where I was like, oh no, I'm in the it's pros. Real. Like yeah, I, this yeah, is real. real. Like we're talking about goats, like banners on banners, rings on rings, mm -hmm. and I'm sharing the court with them. Like I was just in La La Land, and they're trying to take my head off. So yeah, that was mm -hmm. my moment. But not <laughs> only was you sharing the court, you was doing your thing on the court. Right, I was trying, but who? Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> Any vets you learned from early on? Like who gave you the best advice? Ooh, ooh, that's a good. I would have to say Sylvia Fowles. Speaking of Syl. Another GOAT, Hall yeah, of Famer. Yeah, Big Syl really took me under her wing, and we were never teammates until the Olympics. And she uh, really just kind of just gave me the ropes and was like, don't lose you. Like, don't, use your, don't lose your sass, your jazz, your, your screaming after and ones. Like, never lose that. And uh, that I stuck with me. Obviously, I got better and stronger, but, like, those little tidbits from someone like that, oh, when, it still goes a long way with me. So, Syl. Mm -hmm. She... she her game is totally different than the person she is. She's so soft-spoken <laughs> and sweet, bro. But on the court, yes, she's a, a dog. dog. She's a dog on the court. <laughs> yes. I love her to death. Are you a shit talker? Mm, I would say I'm petty. <laughs> but no, you're just saying you're a woman. Because <laughs> yeah. all women are petty. <laughs> I would say I'm a shit talker, but like... If it, I don't, I don't back down from a lot of things. Yeah, I get petty. I, I don't hit below the belt, but I get petty a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kelsey Plum said that women cut deep, cut deeper than men when they when they talk trash talk. Yeah, more petty. Yeah, way more, more petty. petty. Yeah, cause like I feel like we do our research. Like we <laughs> we know things that you probably don't think we know. Mm. Yeah. So then I might throw a little jab at you, mm. and I'm like, oh, you didn't know I knew that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I see. Women it. are very. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You do our better research, detectives. Like, yeah. Oh, that guy, great like, detectives. Hey, great that, detectives. That guy you call a boyfriend? Yeah, he was with my homegirl <laughs> last night. <laughs> <laughs> now that's messy. But no, that's we do messy. our research. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's messy. We don't need to throw that I didn't out. Know how <laughs> I didn't know how deep simple, it like, I know. Then she started thinking, and you'd be like, I don't know. But now I got you thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we're not messy, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Hey, that'll do somebody, that'll do somebody uh, that'll bad. Just say somebody. that. Right. Like, oh, huh? you didn't know I knew her. What the hell is she talking about? Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. And, and just away. walk away. And then she's like, what? <laughs> so, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Have you had any low points or rough moments in your career so far? Mm. 
And don't lie, because we, we've been watching. We've been doing our research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and maybe you need to do some research on your research. <laughs> no, yeah. I've definitely had my moments where I've just, like, especially in the bubble, like, we didn't have one outlet. Like, nothing. Like, no excursions, no nothing. It was just me and my bed. That's it. And I think that was kind of really hard for me because I love outlets. I love, like, watching movies or just chilling, talking with my family, my puppies, like, all that. And when those were stripped away from me, I was like, whoa, like, I don't know. And everyone was like, okay, well, Asia has to be great because she just won her first MVP. We went to the finals for the first time. It was great. But in actuality, I felt like I was being a people pleaser. And that there tore me up because there's I was trying to please literally – I always say, like all of my Twitter followers, I try to please them each and every People that each, don't matter. Right. Everyone, I'm like, okay, what do you need Asia to be? What do you need her to be? And I lost myself. And I lost, I was in a very dark, dark, dark place because I'm just trying to be everybody, everything that people wanted me to be. And that's when I was just like, you know what? I'm done. I don't give a fuck about nobody. I mm-hmm. need to focus on myself right and uh, go from there. And ever since then, uh, I've been extremely well just like, Mentally and just approach the way I approach things. It's like I'm doing this for me because I love it, and that's my sole purpose—not to please anyone else. And that there kind of just kind of flipped the script. You look so happy right now. Thank you. You look happy. Thanks. Good thing. It's a glow. Uh, The woman game. The women's game has grown so much in the past few years. Uh, What is one or two things you feel like it needs to happen for it to continue to grow and and reach its potential? That money. I was about to say. Run that, run that the, bag the up. Bank account. <laughs> what are you talking about? Run that bag up. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the salary. Uh, we, we could sit here and talk about that all day. And that's just between the economy and society. That's as a whole. But when I'm thinking about just diving a little bit deeper, it would have to be storytelling. I think that's the biggest thing is getting deeper than the WNBA player you see on the screen. Getting more into the lives of how we navigate this when they – when put, and I'm lucky and I'm blessed. Shout out to my agent, Jade. What up, Jade? <laughs> we see you. I don't have to go overseas. You know, I don't have to play overseas. I can stay here and kind of get the grinded out here. But those young ladies that have to go overseas to play that and kind of getting lost in the sauce and forgotten about, how can we tell their stories so they don't have to do that? And I think mm-hmm. that is so key of where now, you know, we have people that's broadcasting it more and tweeting it more and seeing people can see the imbalance. But that comes from storytelling and allowing – you know, me to be on you guys' mm-hmm. podcast is always a great thing. So I think that's the biggest thing I want to see is just more storytelling, told. more yeah. pushing pushing faces out there that mm-hmm. look like the audience mm-hmm. and giving them different views of that. Uh, your teammate Kelsey came on the show and yeah. said, don't come to our game to support. Come right. to our game and watch and enjoy. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. Because I don't. Our biggest thing is like you don't. We're not anyone's charity case. You know, right. we don't y'all need. Hoopers. Y'all yeah, too. like I don't, I don't need anyone to be like, all right, I made it to the game. Here you go. Like, I don't need that validation. Like, I put tons and tons of work in. Come see us hoops. Come see the entertainment, the show that we're putting on. Like, that is the fun. Like, I don't need you to be like, ah, let me wear this orange hoodie. Like, cool. Right, right. Great. I'm not a fan of orange, but hey, (laughs) you go ahead and rock it. (laughs) But like, it's kind of like, I feel like we sometimes get that feel from a lot of people. And it's like, you could just leave that at home. I'd rather you just be straight up and be like, I don't really rock with y'all because y'all can't dump. Cool. See ya. Mm -hmm. Move along. We can have somebody else sit there. So He's not watching basketball if he say y'all can't dump. (laughs) What are you watching? I came to a game last year, my first game here, and I was with you uh, on the baseline, and I was not surprised, but it was rocking in that motherfucker. Yeah. You guys are playing the Liberty too. Yeah. It was rocking, <laughs> and I'm just like, damn. Because I went to some Sparks games, and it, I felt like it didn't have the energy right. that the Aces games have. Like you guys have a live ass crowd out yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, and it and, and it that's what people have to kind of give a chance. It's like not every game's gonna be like ours, mm-hmm. but just giving it a chance. That's why I tell people to come to our games because it's like, mm-hmm. all right, we'll set the stage for you. But right. yeah, it's been good. Um, do you think it's whack that? Men can bounce after one, and y'all have to stay four. I think it's whack period that nobody can't go straight out of high school. You can go to war and get your head blown off at 18, but you can't go provide for your family. That's bullshit. Well, thanks, Asia. <laughs> Asia, how do you feel? I had to get that off, Asia. Yeah. It was, it was I think, bubbling. I think you it was bubbling. I got you. I felt like he asked me that. My bad. <laughs> uh, I'm in between. I really am in between because I feel like for us, 
and our league is just so, I don't want to say so old, but we're very, very, very mature. Mm -hmm. Like, we're very mature. And the NBA, on the flip side, is very young. Young. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you can get into there. And also, you have the G League for the NBA. Mm -hmm. So you have leagues that can develop you to get ready for that next level. Mm -hmm. Versus us, we don't have that. Yep. So it's like, when you enter in the league, you got to be ready. And mm -hmm. especially the way the season goes, it's like March Madness draft, training camp. Like, we don't have a combine. So it, we can't. I feel like we are easy way our way into the league is literally college. And mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes you need I say at least two years, but then I look back at my two years in college and I'm like, oh, I would have stayed all four because I need it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, but if people feel like they're ready, I would say at least two years for us, then we can go. Because okay. then you kind of find yourself in the in the real world. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I don't know. One and done is kind of hmm. no what, what you think about these uh tenth grade this tenth grader and they this uh tenth grader and eleventh graders, they going up just dunking backwards and all these girls like insane. So just imagine what they gonna be like in two, three years. Insane. And I <laughs> right, they got me over here. I'm like, oh I gotta get my game on. Right, yeah. I ain't about to be calling me old head. They like, out here right. talking, they out here taking off. <laughs> right. For real. Um who are obviously with your competitive nature, I was gonna say who do you like to watch outside of your team, but who do you like to compete against? Give me two or three women like Okay, I can't wait to play her. I love it every time we match up. Ooh, I mean, obviously Stewie, Brianna mm -hmm. Stewart. I feel like Stewie, we, yeah, we Jeez. got. I feel like we have the, the league in our palms mm -hmm. right now, and I love that for us because we really grew up from like junior USA ball. Oh, y'all been playing against each other for a minute. Yeah. Stewie. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I would say Stewie and who else in the league? I'm trying to think now. I would say my best friends, Alicia Gray. She's uh, in. Atlanta. I love playing against her because I'm always trying to get out the dub. I'm trying to send her a shot to the concession stand. Uh, and she always be coming from my neck, which is crazy. But yeah, those two I would like. I just love to compete against. So, yeah. Flip side, the men's game. Who are some guys you like, uh, appreciate watching? Ooh. Ooh. I mean, obviously, Braun. Like, I mean, the things that he can do, not even at this age, but talking about this it's age. Period. Is Incredible. He's doing stuff at this age. I couldn't do at 18. It's insane uh, how his mind works in the game. I mean, I like Giannis, too. Giannis is also someone that I'm like, all right, but you got – it's just dominance. I feel like the dominance of the game that they carry is just it's, – it's, it's incredible to watch. Who is Asia outside of hoops? Any random hobbies or guilty pleasures? Oh, who's Asia? Asia's just a big kid, honestly. Yeah, she burned out. I think she burned out just like us. You though. mentioned your dogs. I you can have, tell. You a do, dog. You a dog. You a dog, mom. I, I know she is. I know she burned out. I can tell she's just like us, dog. Look, if she starts shaking her head, yeah, she burned. She's just like us, dog. Hey, she burned hey, out, dog. But, Jay, but Jade is over there drinking that truth serum. So Jade over there shaking her head like, yeah, she burned. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. Y'all are hilarious. <laughs> No, you know I go to church. <laughs> hey, us too. I go to Bible study. Um, us too. Every uh, not Bible study, but we we be in the church too. You know, um, no, yeah, you know I chill with my puppies. Um, I really just kind of stay out the way. I love a good movie always. Um, give me some sit not to cut you off. What are some? You watching these shows right now? What are some of your shows you fucking? I with? just finished Blacklist. I'm kind of old Ooh, to it. Yeah, Blacklist Raymond Reddington. Yes. I'm locked in. Like Blacklist if I need anyone to commit any crime for me, I'm calling Raymond. Yeah. Like 100. percent That's mm -hmm. something I just finished. Um, and I love The Office. I'm a little corny girl I too. I forgot The Office. Ah, oh, see, they, say, they it. say it's great though. It is. It's it's nice. Um, but yeah, I'll just be chilling, honestly. <laughs> Burnt out. <laughs> One message that you could have for the Las Vegas fans, and this is your solo right here, this upcoming season right here. What is one message you give to your fans for this upcoming season? Besides your burnt. <laughs> look for her on a new season. Uh, <laughs> That'd be dope. Uh, that would be fun. Right uh, to the Aces fans. Just get ready for the ride. Uh, it's going to be exciting. I know everyone's saying three-peat, three-peat, three-peat. Um, and we're going to obviously try our best like we do every single year. But it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of high energy. I think we're just starting to get into our groove. Um, it's Olympic year coming up, too. So uh, it's going to be a lot of great basketball. So we appreciate you guys. Um, and always, it's love. Three is different. Who, who spoke to that, Kobe? Three is different. Like, yep. two is tough, but they said three, three is, is another, another level. level. Yes. I mean, this two is like, I still can't believe it. 
Like I just still, it's still like surreal to Especially me. Especially with like, all the injuries, you like I said, we talked. You guys hit with so many yeah. injuries in the finals. Yeah, it was like something that I've that. never ever. I can't. I still can't wrap my head around it because mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Because even when I see signs or stuff that's like, oh, 2022, and I'm like, damn, we did that shit again. Like yeah, that's mm -hmm. why it makes it's crazy. so visible for that they can win it again next year because everything they went through and still won. Yeah, mm -hmm. Just imagine if y'all come back healthy and everybody right. healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. That's so the that's scary part. Be scary. <laughs> Top five. WNBA players of all time. And if you don't say I'm sorry. I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm gonna let you answer. I was about to say something. No, go ahead. You burnt. You. I just want to no, see your answer. He's answers. burnt. He's go burnt. Ahead. I want you to answer. Yeah, she burnt. I want to see He sometimes answers. thinks he's getting interviewed when okay. he's, he's That's one all of good. the hosts. <laughs> Forgive him. That's part of his burntness. <laughs> um, can I say myself? Yes. Ah. yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Break yeah. your arm. I told you you got to break yeah. your arm sometimes. Yeah. I'm a Leo, too, so my, I'm always my I'm main character energy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, me? Yes. Candice? Yes. Maya Moore? Mm, she has mm. called. Two spots. Uh, uh. Diana Tarazi. Mm. He got something to say no matter what your last I answer really is. I'm just trying to see who the last person is. Yeah, it's a big spot. I, as, can I get like a... Give me two more spots. Okay. I'm going to make it a little easier. Cheryl Swoops. Mm-hmm. I got uh, Cynthia Cooper. Oh, doctor. Yeah. I was about to lose my mind. I couldn't. I was, <laughs> I was, it, was lose my mind. it was literally between them two. Y'all sitting there about to lose it over here, bro. bro. I was like, she I She just won the first four. I got you. Okay. I, when right. y'all said five, I was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, I think that's solid. Yeah. Uh, collegiate player right now in the, in the women's game, you feel like has a bright future? Man. Mmm. I'm going to be obviously biased with my Gamecocks because, duh. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say Raven. Raven. I feel like Raven, Ooh. and she's in the, she's at the per, and I'm not just saying my this girl. because she's South Carolina, like she's at South Carolina. She's a fresh, she's a sophomore. Sophomore. Okay. sophomore. And you're being taught by Dawn Staley at the point guard position. Don't get better. Like, I feel like you don't get a better situation than that. And I think her being disrespected in the Final Four last year yeah. kind of woke her up yeah. in a sense that's like, oh, bet, like, cool, this is what y'all going to say. I was screaming at the TV, shoot that <laughs> shit, Raven. <laughs> Damn, shoot that shit. Yes, but sometimes you need to be brought out like that yeah. and be like, nah, let me get my game tight. And mm. I think she's just playing. She's leading her team. She's making the right choices and decisions that's like, I feel like she's gonna be a star, like as as years come, like when and see this is where the four year plan comes in. As she gets older and understand being in the SEC as well, like they rough you up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I I firmly believe I'm a, I'm a fan of her. For Sis, sure. but all these kids that's going in the draft, top five, top ten in the last couple of years, she played with these kids in the opposite game and dominated. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. she definitely has the talent to be, to yeah. be one of the stars. Yeah, and she got the swagger. Like, no yeah. back down. She's just a dog. Like, I love that. So, yeah. Basketball IQ is high, too. Yes, 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 yes. How do you feel like Angel Reese's game will transfer to the pros? I think it's going to transfer pretty fair out because I feel like she has – a niche to it, like she she can rebound. I feel like I've seen her rebound so much that I feel like that's going to be her key when she gets to the league. Now, if she keeps that up, I feel like that's going to be huge. But I think that's what's going to be the separating factor for her, even in college, is how can I get more possessions for myself but also my team? So obviously she got years to grow, or a couple of years to grow, uh, just to let it translate over. And it's going to be tough and hard because our league is so tough. Like I, I can't express that to so many people. Like we got some dogs at every position. And it's hard coming in being a four and a five. Like, it really is. But I think when I see her play, I'm like, all right, she got a little something to her that's going to be like, okay, she can then translate that over to the pros. Now, if I ain't seen her, I'd be like, I don't know. I'm worried. But to see that side of her, I feel like that's where she's going to shine the brightest. What kind of damage could you have done in college with the NIL? What? Huh? What? I'm talking about Rolls Royce. What? Chinchilla, I'm showing up to the game. <laughs> I'm showing up to the game. Like Frank Lucas, huh? What? With a cane, <laughs> head cocked to the side. Like, oh no, I'm here. And at the end of the game, if y'all want me to sign something, it's $100 out yeah, back. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah, yeah. Full that shit. hustle. Like, what? They'll be like, nah, Asia, she, she, I'm kicking out the door. Like, yeah. what? But I what? love it. Yeah, yeah I would have. God knew. God knew who to give that to. Because yeah. what? Yeah. yeah. Man. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Question, the mix-up between 
Angel and Caitlin, Caitlin Carp yeah. during the Final Four. Yeah. It happens all the time in the men's game. Right. It happens still a lot in your guys' game, yeah. but it was made such a big deal on that stage. Yeah. What was your guys' take as pros? I was laughing. Every day. It's a part of the Shit game. Shit every day. V. I was like, if we're overreacting at this, good Lord. Crazy. Where's we, our game We going? say worse things to white boys playing basketball when we play. 100%. Particularly you. <laughs> no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. All, don't do that. Don't do that, particularly me. All NBA players go harder on white boys on the court. That's just how like it's always like Even Larry Bird. Unwritten Larry rules. Bird got guarded by a white guy. He was like, y'all don't have any brothers? Yeah. yeah. Larry, <laughs> that's what Larry boy. Bird said. He felt so, disrespected. Yeah, he, yeah, he felt disrespected. Felt I disrespected. feel like that's like the unwritten Hooper rules. So, no, I was laughing. I was like, it's never that deep. It's, it's right. never Ever. that deep. But I guess... And then that's when you can tell when people don't really watch the game. They're right. just there for the drama and the, the antics. Of it. Yeah, like they're mm -hmm. like, oh, let me dive into this and give you my comment. I'm like, yeah. you have never been in that situation before. But it was funny to me. Uh, I loved it. I hated that South Carolina was kicked out. I was a little bummed out about mm. that. But I was like, man, go for it. It is what it is. <laughs> Who's your childhood crush? Mm. I like Will Smith. I was a fresh Prince of L.A. type of yeah, girl. Yeah, that's so our like guy. Him, that was like. Shout out Will. Yeah, Shout out was, Wilbur. Wilbur. Oh, that's, yeah, that's uh, it. Best piece of advice you've ever received? Mm, best piece of advice? Nobody cares, work harder. Yeah. <laughs> that's real. I think that was like the kind of gut check like a, that oh, I had. Like, shit. damn, you are so right. No one cares. And uh, yeah, that right there is something that I always remember. I tell myself when I'm at the free throw line, I'm like, girl, nobody cares you're tired. Keep going. Mm. So yeah, that's something that I always kind of live by. One thing you wish you were better at, it doesn't even have to be sports related. One thing I wish I could be better at, I wish I could sing. You're the second person that said that. I wish I could sing. Yeah, I feel like I would just like really be Done. Yeah. Like I'm solidified. Then. You, you know, you know, just how somebody coached you in basketball, you can be coached. To I ain't sing. trying to go through. Not it. at this oh, okay. point. I ain't trying to go but through. But I, feel I disagree, you. bro. You can. It's not. It's never that serious. Eddie Murphy did an album. <laughs> <laughs> Party all the time. <laughs> that shit was jamming. But somebody probably schooled him. You know what I'm saying? Gave him a little no. voice coach. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. Mm -mm. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Biggest risk you've ever taken. Mm. Biggest risk. Coming on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Biggest risk? I feel like I'm a risk taker. Every day, uh, Every day. Like, I just try to life. do. Yeah, just life in itself, I feel like it's a big risk. And I'm always, like, down to poke the bear. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Guilty pleasure. Ooh, guilty pleasure. I can eat a whole pizza by myself. Ooh. That tickled you? Yeah. That tickled her. <laughs> <laughs> if you could see one guest on all the smoke, who would it be? But you have to help us get your answer on the show. Mm, someone in your Rolodex. Don't stay. <coughs> stay. <coughs> who? Don Staley. Oh. Yeah, of course. We love her. Uh, yes. Nigga, we yeah, come on. had her on the show already. Uh, nigga. Now, what you doing? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, listen, listen, listen. What? We had, hold on. How you gonna throw this, me the log? We had Don Staley remote. The truth to that. Truth. Okay. Don't, don't know. Don't listen to none of these people. Right. Y'all need to hear. We had Lil Wayne remote. We had Lil Wayne in. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. I don't, look, let me do okay, Don Staley. Okay, Don. And she just and she has done a lot since we had her. She she signed the biggest contract. Right. She's the man. Look, Don Staley. Okay. I know so what I'm talking I think about. my guess is gonna be yeah, Don. Get, yeah. Tell this nigga. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's a really good. That's one. what she said. Yeah, for, that was for, really good. Forgive my partner. Yeah, no, forgive him for not knowing what I'm talking about, nigga. I knew no. what I was saying. Yeah, that's dope. I think Don's. I think Don would be yeah, great. Don's the shit. Yeah. Well, Asia, man, we appreciate. I, I, I love. I've always been a fan of your game, but I, I think your energy and spirit are just as amazing as your game. And, and, and like you said, you pride yourself on not only being a great basketball player but a great person. And I think you're, you're doing a great job at accomplishing that. So, thank you for your time. Continue to push the league to new heights, and best of luck. Thank you so much. That's a wrap. Asia Wilson, all the smoke. <laughs>